Hey everybody, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric, thank you so much for joining me. If you are new to the channel, welcome. It is very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, what's up squad? So, welcome to your readings for September 2018, yeah? Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to all the new subscribers, but thank you to all the returning subscribers. Uh, your support is everything to me. I really, really, really appreciate it. Uh, we just recently hit 10,000, and I'm super, super happy. I couldn't be more grateful. Thank you to all you guys. You are freaking amazeballs, yeah? <laughs> so, uh, just a few things. One, this is a general reading, so please take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. Um, and the energies are interchangeable, okay? So it could be you that we're talking about. It could be the other person that we're talking about, if we're talking about another person. Um, these aren't necessarily love readings, but love definitely comes out because I am channeling for the Venus sign. Your Venus sign is uh, how you approach love, how your information about that. So if you are looking for information about like, your love life, I would recommend, me personally, I recommend that you always start with your Venus sign. You can find that out um, if you pull you know uh, pull up your birth chart yeah drop your birth chart now about birth charts um, I want to make a little bit of a uh, bit of a suggestion um, this might be a bit of a long intro if people want to leave a timestamp go right ahead um, but I do recommend that you guys listen to the intro at least once especially if you're watching like a bunch of different signs um, just listen to the intro at least once and then like do whatever um, but uh, I recently got into Vedic Astrology, which is uh, also known as Sidereal, I believe. Um, and uh, I did this because my spiritual team, my spiritual guides really pushed it for me to start investigating. And I did so. And I learned that my signs are different. Okay, So I always thought of, uh, I grew up as a Taurus. My sun sign was Taurus. But then when I did the Eastern chart, the Vedic chart, um, sidereal chart, I learned that my son is actually in Aries. And when, <laughs> when I learned about that and, and I really like investigated and I read it and I like felt it out, it, it immediately clicked. Like it felt right. I was like, Oh, Oh man. Because when I started to look back on like how I present myself, how I like how I work in the world and everything like that, um, I am very much an Aries. <laughs> So that makes sense. I still kind of resonate with Taurus, but um, very much in Aries. So then other than that, you know, in, in the Western chart, um, my moon sign was Leo and my rising sign is Venus. I'm sorry, rising sign is Venus. No, my rising sign is Virgo and my Venus is in Aries. But then in the Eastern chart, my moon sign is Cancer, my rising sign is Leo, and then my Venus is in Pisces. And when I looked at all that uh, that stuff too, I was like, oh my God, that makes so much more sense. Because when it came to the Western chart, I was like, how am I so intuitive, but I don't have, I barely have any water in my chart. I think in the Western chart, I think I have like one planet in Scorpio. Um, and it might, I think it might be Neptune or something. I don't know. But then when it came to the Eastern chart, there was all the water I was missing, right? So for me personally, things really clicked and I understood, I came to a better understanding of myself. So the reason why I'm sharing this with you guys is I encourage you to check that out. Um, you can watch my videos or any of the videos, whether you, whether you resonate more with Western or Eastern astrology, it really doesn't matter. It's just um, all about how you feel how this connects with you, how it resonates with you, okay? Um, so I'm, I put uh, some links to some websites to, that are, I find are to be really, really great um, in giving you your chart. Um, actually, there's one, there's one that actually will give you both, but I'll give you two, two different options. Um, they're going to be in this description box below, and uh, I encourage you guys to, you know, insert your um, your birth data, your birth information, and check it out. See what comes out, and if you resonate with something, go for it, and then start to watch the videos from that point of view. Like if now, if you all of a sudden you find that things are different when it comes to the Eastern chart, and you want, and you kind of resonate with it already, and you want to watch videos uh, in line with that, I encourage you to do so. You know, it's really all about what you resonate with, how, what you feel about the situation. Yeah. Okay. With that said, um, I'll, a few more things. One, you can find me in New York City at Om Shanti Bookshop. 
every Monday from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Om Shanti is located on 14th Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenue in the East Village of Manhattan. So come check me out if you're in the area. I would love to meet you guys in person. Um, the, uh, the link to the website uh, for Om Shanti Bookshop is in the description box below. So you can go to the website, get their phone number, give them a call. If you want to schedule a reading beforehand, you're more than welcome to do so. Or at the same time, walk-ins are definitely welcome. Um, and it's a great shop, you know, they've got all kinds of really nice stuff. The crystal selection is fantastic. So if you're into crystals, I recommend coming down and checking us out. We have a lot of great stuff there. Um, you can get some crystals wrapped and put into jewelry for you at the shop. Um, if you do want some crystal wrapping, ask for Martha. She's great at that. Um, what else? Oh, I am available for private readings. Uh, my email address is in the description box below, along with a description of all the readings that I offer, all in the description box. If you would like a personal reading with me, just go down into the description box, look at the options, read through them, see which one might, may work well for you, and then throw shoot me an email. If you don't know which reading would be best for you, go ahead and email me, and we'll chat, and I'll help you decide which one you would like, yeah? Okay, so for the readings this month, um, I'm using the Golden Universal Tarot. I love this deck, guys. I love it. It's just so pretty. And then I am closing out the readings with Oracle Guidance from my favorite, Oracle of the Unicorns. Yeah, I love unicorns. I personally believe that I am a unicorn, but you know what? That's fine. Whatever. <laughs> All right, guys. I guess that's it. Thank you for sticking in to with the with the long intro with me. If you did, if you didn't, don't worry about it. It's fine. You can't even hear this part of the message anyway. <laughs> I love you guys. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in. Let's get to it. Hey Capricorn, welcome to your reading for September 2018. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let's get started. Hey Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Capricorns, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages for Capricorn to serve the highest good of all involved for the month of September, excuse me, 2018. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Capricorn. What's going on with you? I'm seeing really like a deep forest green and also brown. So it's like almost like tree colors. So you guys are very grounded right now or you're getting grounded or you need to get grounded. Um, but for some reason, I want I, I kind of feel like Capricorn, you're like the most grounded of the earth signs. Sometimes almost too grounded. <laughs> um, now, while I was pre-shuffling before I started uh, the, re the video here, um, your card, the devil, came out with the four of wands in reverse. Ah, and the emperor in reverse. So, um, I'm feeling like there could be some sort of dissolution of a marriage. That's what I heard um, just now. Um, you could be having some trouble within the home with a masculine energy. Could be your father. It could be your husband um, or wife, depending on you know who who um, who is holding or holding more of the masculine energy here. Um, I'm hearing there's there's there could be some sort of manipulative or narcissistic um, expression or tendencies within the home life. Um, that could be, that's causing trouble, could be causing trouble for some of you within the home, okay? Capricorn, Capricorn, Capricorn. Yeah, but I'm seeing some very, I'm seeing some very deep forest green energies here. Um, so you could be going through some sort of heart chakra clearing, heart chakra opening. You may need to be cleaning out your heart chakra because some of this energy almost feels muddy, like it's just... Um, it's just got, it's just like a clouded with a bunch of muck, a bunch of gook. It might be some sort of deep seated situation here. It might be having to do with the emperor or this energy that represented by the emperor in reverse, um, that needs to be healed, cleaned, cleared, whatever, that sort of thing. 
Okay, one more shuffle for you, Capricorn. Um, and then we're gonna get going. Um, get grounded. I really want to tell you guys to get grounded, or at least some of you. Some of you need to go out into nature, walk around barefoot um, in the grass or something, but someone, somebody needs to get grounded here. It could be you. You could be the one exhibiting these uh, the emperor in reverse energies um, that's causing trouble for you in the home life. So please, somebody needs to get grounded here. Okay, we've got the ace of pentacles in your overall energy. This is upright. This is a new beginning uh, physically. This could be a commitment. Um, this could be a new start within a commitment. Also, um, with the four of wands that came out before in reverse, some of you might be moving, okay? So this could be a new home. A fresh start is what I'm really hearing for most of you. That's like the big, loud, and clear general message here. Yeah, look at that. Death. Death is in reverse, though. It's okay. So there's a transformation. Um, you may be coming out of a transformation. Um... And so now you're starting over, okay, fresh new start. And this could have to do, uh, wow, you've got with, with a water sign, you've got the Queen of Cups in reverse here, Cancer's Pisces, Scorpio. Um, yeah, you could be leaving, yeah, you could be leaving a relationship. You could have left a relationship. Uh, your relationship may have really transformed with this person, this Queen of Cups in reverse here. Um, I'm really picking up a release, a, either a release of someone else um, or a release of a certain energy uh, represented by the Queen of Cups in reverse, okay? So the Queen of Cups in reverse is extremely emotional, doesn't cannot hold their emotions in check. Um, they could be... I, I did hear someone re uh, describe the Queen of Cups in reverse once as batshit crazy. <laughs> so if that resonates with you, okay. Um, but uh, it could just really be someone... I'm picking up an energy of someone that really just does not know how to control their emotions. Um, doesn't have a good check on them. And, or in the other in the other hand on the other hand it doesn't have to be an overly emotional person it could just be someone you know represented by the queen of cups someone that is very loving uh very compassionate maybe even psychically attuned very intuitive very psychic um that you have moved away from okay that you have let go of transformed from and you have the six of wands underneath all of that and the six of wands is upright so whatever this transformation is that you're going through right now or at least you're coming out of and this new start that's happening it's quite victorious in some way okay all right so the, for the first half of your month we have the first set of current energies we got aha look at that a breakup three of swords okay the three of swords is upright um I literally heard, when I pulled that card, I heard a breakup, okay? And uh, with death here in transformation, oh, well, now actually you could really, you could really, could be dealing with a water sign um, because you have death, which just represents Scorpio, and then you have the Queen of Cups there, okay? So, um, yeah, let's see. The Three of Swords is coupled with the King of Wands, okay? You could be dealing with a fire sign also. Um, it's funny because as I was channeling your energies, Capricorn, I did hear Sagittarius. And last month, um, the readings for Sagittarius and Capricorn were very similar. Um, I, I was picking up that Sagittarius, in the Sagittarius reading, there was some sort of Capricorn or uh, there was potentially a Capricorn that they were dealing with um, that was just not in a good place. So if this is a continuation for you, it looks like either you guys broke up or you have the, the situation has transformed in some way. Okay. I also just heard Leo energy in uh, connecting with this uh, King of Wands here. So you could also be dealing with a Leo. You could be dealing with any fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. But it doesn't have to be a fire sign. It could just be someone that exhibits this King of Wands energy. Um, you know, very charismatic, very driven, passionate, um, can be very self-centered though. Okay, and when it's coupled with the Three of Swords here, it could be someone that, you know, exhibited some sort of cheating, lying, deception, deceit in order to get what they want. They like, they could be very focused on what they want. Okay. On the other hand, with this Queen of Cups in reverse, um, you could just be feeling very, really super emotional throughout this transformation or coming out of this transformation. That's 
something else. So you might want to, you might have to keep your emotions in check. You might want to work on that. You might just want to be careful of that. Okay. But someone, someone's heart has been broken here, either by the King of Wands or you are the King of Wands and your heart's been broken. This is a masculine energy. You don't have to be male to have to hold masculine energy. Okay. All right, second set of current energies for the first half of the month. We've got the Eight of Pentacles. So you're working on rebuilding something, Capricorn. This is very much your energy too, okay? Uh, I definitely see the Eight of Pentacles as, the, as a Capricorn card. You're working hard on rebuilding, picking up the pieces, setting things straight after this transformation here. Eight of Pentacles is coupled with strength in reverse, okay? So you really could be dealing with the Leo. You could have Leo in your chart. Um... But there, I, I really feel like there's a lot of fear surrounding this new beginning. Um, you could be feeling like you don't have the strength. Maybe you don't even have the uh, um, abundance or the, um, I want to say, material supply, for lack of a better term, in order to complete this new beginning you're creating, this all this work that you're doing. Um, you could be, you could be overworking yourself out of fear too, Capricorn. That is. <laughs> Something you might do a lot, huh? Yeah. You could be distracting yourself in work in order to, you know, deal, cope with the fear that you may be feeling. Okay. Um, current challenge for the first half of the month. We have the Knight of Swords. Okay. Knight of Swords is coupled with the Sun. All right, so more fire energy, more Leo energy. <laughs> Your current challenge could, it, it most likely is trying to communicate with this Leo or this fire energy, or, or it doesn't even have to be a fire sign or, or anything. Um, your current challenge is knowing you need to communicate or somebody needs to communicate. There's some, there's some sort of communication that needs to happen. And it could be pretty harsh. It could be pretty harsh. There might be a really tough conversation that needs to happen. But um, well, what I meant, what, what I'm trying to say is, instead of saying "but," what I should be saying is, um, it's it's a type of communication that's going to put bring some sort of illumination in. Okay, there is some truth that needs to be told here. And yeah, that does feel challenging. It does. But it's something you definitely over, you can overcome and will overcome also with the sun here. It's going to be okay. What I was going to say when I said but was, but it's going to be okay because the sun is here. Everything's, the sun is shining. Everything's going to be fine. It's just there is communication that needs to happen here, Capricorn. And that is your, that is your challenge for this first half of the month. Illumination, shedding some light on something, Okay. Uh, potential outcome for the first half of the month. We have Seven of Swords. Someone's trying to get away from some, uh, get away with something. You might be trying to avoid this conversation. Seven of Swords is coupled with the Page of Cups. All right. So what I'm getting here is Page of Cups is a dreamer. The Page of Cups also talks about, um, in my, uh, as far as I, I'm concerned, when it comes for me, really, what this means, it can mean is. Um, re-identifying yourself or, or re self-discovery in the form of emotions and emotional reality. So there's an energy of deceiving yourself or trying to get away with not facing your emotions, trying to run away from your emotions even. And I feel like it really has a lot to do with this conversation that needs to happen. This truth that needs to be spoken. Listen, Capricorn or whoever else this is resonating with in association with Capricorn, you cannot run from yourself. You can try and try and try. <laughs> but it's never, nothing, nothing's ever going to come of it. You're going to have to face it sometime. Better late than never. The longer you run, the longer you prolong this, okay? Second half of the month, uh, upcoming energies. We have 
Two of Wands in reverse. Wow. You are, you really have a choice to make, but I really feel like you're refusing to make this choice. This is energy that's carrying on from the first half of the month. And honestly, the choice I'm picking up that needs to be made here is whether or not to communicate, to tell the truth, to honor yourself. Two of Wands in reverse is coupled with the Four of Pentacles in reverse. Now, granted, Two of Wands, I want to do, I want to say, is more fire energy. But I'm picking up more passion than fire. It's something, it's something that's spiritually guided. There is something deep within your soul that you need to make a choice around. But you're refusing to make this choice with the Four of Pentacles in reverse. I really feel like you're really stuck or you might feel stuck or you're keeping yourself stuck because you just don't want to face this. You don't want to make a decision. That's no fun, Capricorn. We're in Virgo season right now. Virgo is ruled by Mercury. Mercury is very much about communication. You have the energy to communicate during this month. Now, communication may be more, a little more, in this sense, maybe a little more of a Libra thing. But I really feel like you have a good energetic foundation, even though it's Virgo season, you do have a good energetic foundation to really set things straight. Put things in order. There we go. But you have to you have to choose to let go and make a decision. Okay? Second set of upcoming energies for the second half of the month. We have... Good Lord. <laughs> the Two of Swords in reverse, Capricorn. So now... Okay, so now I, my, my question is... Yeah, some of you are refusing to make this choice because that's what I'm hearing. But others of you, okay, so maybe you have made that choice. Two of Wands in reverse, Four of Pentacles in reverse. Maybe you have let go and made the choice. Maybe, and now with the Two of Swords in reverse, maybe you have decided to move forward with something. Two of Swords in reverse is coupled with the Seven of Pentacles upright. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I really don't feel like the choice has been made. Because the Seven of Pentacles talks about procrastination sometimes also. I really feel like you're, you're trying to avoid this. These reversals are not, are not releases for the most part. These reversals are just being stuck. in these energies of needing to make a choice with the two of wands, but not wanting to face something with the two of swords and holding on to dear life for something that you really, really, really need to let go of with the four of pentacles in reverse and then just sitting in it with the seven of pentacles upright. But at the same time, the silver lining here is that you are taking stock of the situation, but I kind of feel like you might be just overthinking it. So Virgo season might have you really feeling that perfectionistic energies of wanting things to work out a specific way or wanting, um, all right, I get it. I get it because you do have the Knight of Swords in the first half of your month as your challenge. So that can be a very aggressive energy. That could be an energy of making decisions, making rash decisions without really thinking it through. All right, so I get it. But at some point, you have to come out and uh, you have to come out of this and make a decision. And speak your truth. Be honest about something. Either you, Capricorn, or someone else that you're or associated with. It could be the cross watcher. And if that's the case, for that energy, I'm picking up that the cross watcher is the one that needs to make the decision and speak some sort of truth, and the Capricorn is just kind of sitting there waiting, patiently. Ever so patiently, I heard. 
upcoming challenge for the second half of the month, you have Knight of Pentacles in reverse. This really is more, there's a lot of earth energy here too. A lot of earth and fire. Well, and air. Okay, so we've got all the elements. But I'm seeing, I'm seeing, um, I'm seeing the Knight of Pentacles here as the Capricorn in the situation. So the current, so the challenge for the second half of the month may very well be that the Capricorn just stops moving forward with this. It could be Capricorn, you choosing, deciding, maybe that's the decision you need to make. Choosing to not work towards this situation anymore, whatever that is for you. But also for the cross watcher, I'm picking up that you are kind of getting into the second half of the month. Should you not have made the decision to speak some sort of truth, you very well could be facing this Capricorn just ending the situation. You don't want to speak? Fine. You don't want to move forward? Fine. I don't want to move forward. I don't want to speak either. And that's that. Knight of Pentacles in reverse is coupled with, whoa, what did I just say? King of Swords, upright. Fine. You don't want to move? Neither do I. Bye. Holy shit. And check it out. The energy I get from this King of Swords here, this King of Swords means business. It's not fucking around anymore. Oh, God. This, is, this energy is really agitating me. It's like, it's frustrating. It's really frustrating. It's like this King of Swords is sitting here waiting, watching this Knight of Pentacles, waiting for this Knight of Pentacles to make some sort of move. And the less and the, and the more time this Knight of Pentacles takes, whether it's you Capricorn or whoever else you're dealing with, the more time this, this Knight takes to take even one step, the more frustrated and furious, really, this Knight of this King of Swords gets and it's funny because a king of swords is very detached and not emotional at all but the reason why he's getting so furious is because his time is being wasted and he doesn't appreciate that ouch holy moly all right potential outcome for the second half of the month you have oh, oh yeah Damn, guys, the Knight of Cups in reverse. That offer is being rescinded. It may not even be coming in. So whoever's taking their sweet-ass time or whoever doesn't want to make a decision is probably, this is, look, this is, there you go. They may, they just may not, they may not communicate. They may not extend this offer. They may not send this invitation, whatever. Whatever this is, they just won't. On the other hand, it could be the other person that's waiting for some sort of communication. They're done waiting. And they're rescinding their, their, their offer. Knight of Cups in Reverse is coupled with... Oh, boy. Yeah, the Two of Cups in Reverse. Done. Release of the relationship. Done. Transformation, guys. What did I say? With the Three of Swords, there is a breakup. Or there's a breakup coming. And by the end of the month, that's, unfortunately, that's what this looks like. But with all that said, Capricorn, or whoever's watching, for Cap whatever, with that said, overall energy you have underneath the deck, the Six of Wands, upright. This is a victory. It's challenging. But either way, everything is going to work out for the highest good of all. Everything's going to work out exactly as it needs to. There will be a victory here in some way, shape, or form. Okay? Oof. This, this, and uh, let me tell you guys, this energy is really heavy right now, Capricorn or whoever's watching. I, uh, I don't like having to deliver messages like this, but sometimes, sometimes they happen. So let's get into some Oracle guidance from the unicorns. Yeah. All 
right, spirit. Please bring forward the best message from the unicorns to Capricorn in relation to this reading for the month of September 2018. Here we go. Best message, please, spirit for Capricorn in relation to this reading. Here we go. You've got two. Excuse me. First, we have growth. Seek out a mentor or mentor or guide. Take a, take baby steps as you grow. Be willing to learn from others. Growth is directly related to this transformation that's happening this month. Okay. The second card you have is polarity. Ooh. Integrate your shadow side. There can be no light without dark. Understand the law of polarity. All right, I'm really picking up a message here, especially in terms of growth. There really needs to be some sort, there, there needs to be an energy or there needs to be an integration between light and dark, good or bad. There also needs to be an understanding that, that, that all relationships are a two-way street, okay? No one person is to blame for everything in the, in the relationship, okay? That's where the polarity comes into play. You have to be able to balance the scales. And if you can't keep the scales balanced within yourself, then your chances of keeping the scales balanced within a relationship are slim to none, guys. All right? But but understanding that and learning from that, whatever happens with this situation, Capricorn, understanding all of that is absolutely leading to your growth, okay? So I don't want you to think that should a relationship end, should it not really like, well, should the relationship end, ultimately you should, you have the opportunity to come out of it learning so much more, being a better version of yourself than you were in the past. But you have to be the one to choose to see it, see it that way. If you don't, you run the risk of running off and finding a new relationship and creating the cycle all over again. And you're going to do that until you learn the lesson and make the change and balance the polarities, balance, integrate your shadow side, balance your light and dark, masculine, feminine, good, bad, however you want to describe it. Understanding also that, and I said it before, I said it here with the seven of swords and the page of cups, you can't run from yourself forever. You can't run from your shadow side. You, your shadow is a part of you. And actually, it's a very important part of you. It will teach you the most about yourself. Okay. <laughs> there it is, Capricorn. I hope this was helpful for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Much love to you all. And I look forward to connecting with you again for the month of October. Yeah? Take care. Mwah. Bye.